insufficiency or heart failure means the heart can't supply the body with enough blood, either because the heart is too weak to pump hard enough or because it does not relax enough between beats to allow the chambers to fill up and the body is constantly not getting enough oxygen. More, more people around the world, especially the elderly, suffer from cardiac insufficiency. It's a life-threatening condition and you might not even recognize how serious it is until it's too late. Feeling lethargic can indicate a possibly life-endangering situation. The early symptoms of cardiac insufficiency, also called chronic heart failure, include feeling tired. But if you're also short of breath and your body is retaining fluid, it's time to see a doctor. The condition is more serious than cancer. Cardiac insufficiency is associated with a mortality rate that's at least as high, if not higher. A healthy heart pumps on average between 5 and 7 liters of blood throughout the body. A weakened heart can often only manage less than half that amount. The condition can be caused by a previous heart attack, high blood pressure, heart muscle inflammation, coronary artery disease, or alcohol consumption. Standard exams don't provide enough information for an accurate diagnosis. To confirm chronic heart failure, treating physicians have to perform cardiac sonography and administer special blood tests. The condition should not be ignored. When left untreated, cardiac insufficiency kills around half of those who suffer from it within two years. And to thoroughly research cardiac insufficiency and treat it effectively, a team of scientists and doctors has bundled their resources in the competence network heart failure. One of those experts is my guest today in the studio, the cardiologist Dr. Felix Meerhoff. Welcome. Hello. So, Dr. Mehoff, who is especially at risk to develop cardiac insufficiency or heart failure? Well, cardiac insufficiency is the common pathway for various heart diseases. And everybody who is suffering from heart disease, let it be a heart attack, let it be high blood pressure or um, a valvular defect of, in the heart, um, might develop cardiac insufficiency. So, it's a, number, a, a big number of people who are at risk. And um, maybe it's more important to say that especially older people um, are more likely to develop heart failure, heart cardiac insufficiency than the younger ones. Mm -hmm. So if sort of prior heart diseases are a risk factor, what role does lifestyle play then? Well, lifestyle plays an important role um, in preventing cardiac or um, cardiovascular diseases and thereby um, lifestyle is important in preventing cardiac insufficiency, of course. Mm -hmm. Is heart failure more prevalent in some countries than in others? I would not say it's more prevalent in some countries. Um, I think the underlying diseases are different. Um, in Germany, in Western Europe, maybe in the United States as well, um, it's most likely atherosclerosis and coronary artery disease, which is um, the main cause for heart failure. Other ones are hypertension. And I think in other parts of the world, it might be more... Um, it might be more infectious uh, causes for um, this kind of disease. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a genetic predisposition for heart failure? Well, yes, there is. Actually, it is probably the third most um, underlying reason for um, cardiac insufficiency. There's a broad number of genes that might um, cause defects in the heart muscle. Mm. Our viewer Ursula Plyen from New Zealand has written to us and she would like to know what the symptoms of chronic heart failure are. Well, the, probably the most typical symptom is shortness of breath. Um, people who um, cannot exercise really good without uh, feeling short of breath, they might um, be suffering from heart failure, from cardiac insufficiency. Other typical symptoms are swollen ankles and legs and um, water anywhere in your body most likely in the lungs, which is causing the shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. Why is it important to diagnose it early? Well, as in any kind of disease, knowing about a problem is um, good because you can treat it then earlier and um, you, might, uh, you might prevent the, the disease of building up and maybe getting into an irreversible state. Mm -hmm. So the heart might change if you don't diagnose it early it enough? It definitely right? will. Thank you for the moment, Dr. Meerhoff. When your heart does not relax properly between beats, the chambers can't fill up with enough blood to keep you going. It's called diastolic cardiac insufficiency. What's worrying is there's not yet any certified therapy for this condition, 
But now scientists at the university in the German city of Göttingen have tested whether regular exercise might help get your heart muscle back in shape. The result? Get off the couch. Exercise is a matter of the heart. Hans-Dieter Vanke is living proof that exercise heals. The heart patient has joined a supervised exercise program. He says it's changed his life. When I've exercised, I feel good. It's a lot of fun and now I'm really into it. I think I'd actually miss it if I couldn't go to training. The 69-year-old first noticed symptoms two years ago. He frequently felt out of breath. In the beginning, I had pains in my chest and also felt quite unwell at times. Walking became difficult, especially for longer distances, because I was always short of breath. I was particularly breathless walking upstairs. This got worse and worse until I could hardly breathe. Vanka's GP referred him to the University Hospital in Göttingen. Vanka was suffering from hypertension. But that alone couldn't be the cause of such severe symptoms. The specialists examined his heart very thoroughly and also ran some blood tests. An ultrasound examination revealed the cause of the patient's severe breathlessness. The walls of his heart muscle had grown stiff and it wasn't able to fill with blood properly, a condition known as diastolic dysfunction. It was a serious diagnosis. In a worst case scenario, diastolic dysfunction can lead to cardiac arrest. The first and most immediate step is to give the patient blood pressure medicine. But for long-term treatment, Franca's doctors prescribed a surprising therapy, exercise. And not just a little. They told the retiree he needed to work out or pursue endurance training at least three times a week. The specialists are studying the effects of exercise on heart patients. In a long-term study, they're looking at what it does to the blood and other physical changes before the training begins and after six months. They're trying to determine the optimal amount of exercise for patients in Vanka's condition. The results confirm that a little bit of exercise helps only a little bit. To noticeably improve a heart condition, patients have to work hard, under medical supervision, of course. It takes willpower, but exercise is an effective therapy. It's become increasingly clear that physical activity causes changes that can only be partially achieved with medication. The most important therapeutic goal for patients with cardiac insufficiency, or those who have weak hearts in general, is to increase their chances of survival. The second is to improve their quality of life, and the third is to improve cardiopulmonary capacity. Physical exercise does all of that. Hans-Dieter Wanke can confirm it. You're in better condition and have more stamina. It makes you a lot more outgoing as well. You get out more and have more interests. Everything around you, your life, is more fun. A therapy that's fun and works at the same time, same time not bad there, hey? That's right. Um, is exercise good for any form of cardiac insufficiency? Well, actually it is, yes. The colleagues in Göttingen showed that um, it is they, well, they are um, investigating whether it's um, helpful in this kind of diastolic heart failure where the heart doesn't relax as well. Um, and the other main form of heart uh, cardiac insufficiency, um, the systolic form of heart pressure, uh, heart failure, where the heart doesn't pump very well, in these forms um, of heart failure, the physical exercise is also um, helping definitely. Mm -hmm. We recommend this to all our patients. So if you suffer from a heart disease and you want to do exercise, what should you look out for? Well, you should, uh, should look out for a regular exercise several times a week, maybe every day. Um, however, you should not go to your limits. I think a good point is or, or a good um, idea is to, um, to exercise, but still be able to talk to your neighbor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So keep the breath down basically, right? A little bit, yeah. What other forms of treatment are there? 
Well, besides this physical exercise or the, um, the training um, as a therapy, I think the medical therapy um, is the basis for all um, patients with uh, cardiac insufficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, so you should combine those two? Yes, I think this is probably the best way to cope mm -hmm. with a problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, to not get to the problem in the first place, to prevent cardiac insufficiency, what can you do? Well, you do what you do to prevent any kind of heart um, disease. You do not start smoking and if you start it, you stop it as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. um, you try to keep to a healthy diet, um, which is mostly we talk about the Mediterranean diet, which is um, leaving out the red, um, the red meat, maybe um, stick with fish um, with lots of vegetable and fruits and um, these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So a healthy, healthy lifestyle basically will help you. Mm -hmm. Will help you keep your heart healthy. <laughs> what new therapies are being tested for the future uh, against heart failure? Well, there are some new therapies. Um, there is a certain kind of pacemaker therapy, um, which is kind of established already, but which is not um, definitely not good for all patients with heart failure. It's really a, a small number of patients who have a certain problem with their heart. They might profit definitely from this um, certain kind of pacemaker. And then there might be other forms of therapies like stem cell therapy, which might be of use in the future. Up to date, I would say um, it's too early to really say this is a definitely good therapy not for yet. cardiac insufficiency, mm -hmm. not yet. Dr. Mehoff, what do you do yourself to keep your heart healthy? Well, as I said, I don't smoke. I go um, jogging regularly, I go swimming in the summer and um, try to keep to a Mediterranean diet. Good for a healthy heart. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for being with us. And in one of our next shows, we'll be speaking to an expert about burnout, a serious illness which is caused by too much stress and leaves you feeling exhausted.